Geek Dad Life presents Toy Geeks Live Toy Talk Show. Tonight we're going to talk about Playmates unveiling their Star Trek Universe 5 inch figure relaunch. We're also going to talk about Formo Toys, kind of putting a pause on their release of those awesome Lords of Power figures. We'll talk about all of that and more tonight on Toy Geeks. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special early bird edition. Or what would we call it again? Uh, early bird special. Early bird special edition of Toy Geeks. My name is Jay, and with me, as always, on this journey of toy geekery, is my good friend John. John, how are you doing tonight? I am well. <laughs> <laughs> Relatively well. Yeah. Um. So, uh, as as everyone knows, uh, John rough battle uh, with COVID. I had a pretty light one. Uh, we're still uh, recovering. Um, but on yesterday's uh, stream, we talked about how today uh, Playmates was gonna like finally unveil the relaunch of mm -hmm. their Star Trek line. So we said, well, if it's worth talking about, we'll do we'll do a live stream about it. Um, and then there's this kind of Formo Toys news, which I know is kind of going on in the chat while we're going live, but it's kind of like, you know, already in motion. So we'll talk about that a little bit as well for this special uh, quicker live stream tonight. Um, but, uh, you know, that's why you got to hit the subscribe button and that bell icon because you never know. You never know when another Toy Geeks might drop, uh, just like this one, just 30 minutes ago. <laughs> um, and good to see some people here already in the chat. Evil Villain is here. Uh, to go boldly, I'm glad uh, to go boldly is in the chat tonight because I really want I wanted to hear like some true blue Star Trek fans perspective mm -hmm. here. Uh Doomed ha, Jamillion uh Parks, uh Space Cowboy, Captain Fa uh, 318, Toy Stalker, make it make it so. Uh Lurch, Nick Dillinger is here as well. Um so okay. They showed us the figures and uh, in the title kind of asked the question uh, will collectors care? that playmates has kind of brought back their I, I it's weird how as i was seeing i think on like toy shiz they're like saying it's one twelfth scale or something I think, I think it's just five inch scale i think it's the same mm -hmm. scale, the original ones um but to kind of set some context here john before we get into it uh one they they made fantastic figures already like so i i recently picked up a whole bunch of them uh you know maybe i should uh, well, anyway, so they made a whole bunch of these things. I think they look great for the era. Kind of got into a fight with Ryan Dole. Not a real fight, like a fun play fight <laughs> uh, with Ryan Dole the day over chat. Because they took offense to me saying, I think we both agree that Playmates was kind of maybe the number one toy maker of the 90s. But they, mm -hmm. did, they did an amazing job with the Star Trek line. Like, sure, it seems you can critique just like any toy line. But it's an incredible, very expansive line that is still dirt cheap today. Like most 90s toys have kind of gone up in secondary market prices, but I just bought all of these for like a nickel. Um, <laughs> just about. And uh, uh, so they're still readily available, all those original figures. Mm -hmm. And so when this was first announced, I think we both said like, is there a demand for these? And so now that we've seen them, John, do we, do we, from your perspective, as an unbiased Star Trek, you know, you're not like a, a Trekker or anything like yep. that. Uh, what's your thoughts on the viability of, of the toys that were revealed today? Um, there's, there's a bit of a, you know, there's a bit of a charm where, you know, for the, you know, the Star Trek collectors, it's something nostalgic where they've hit that point where similar to, you know, us collecting origins, where we get a modernized articulated version of the 5.5 inch masters figures that we had. Yep. It's, it's kind of the same idea. I, I think it's the same idea for a star Trek fan where there's this, you know, great length of time has passed where they can get it's, it's very, you know, it's so much, it's so similar to the playmates figures Yeah. where, I mean, I told you, they look like they just took, <laughs> the vintage playmates figures and articulated them like yeah. they are very close um but i think it's something for the star trek fans to you know to go buy at retail it's it's mm -hmm. good for them i'm happy for them they look better than i thought they were going to be mm -hmm. you know um just because of what playmates have been doing but luckily varner studios is doing the work yep 
exactly. They're, you know, they've been doing the, the, the good work at Playmates for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So I think there's there's something to these. Yeah. For for the for the collectors. Do I think the line is going to go that far? No. Um, you know, I, I picture maybe uh, five waves of, of three figures at the most. Mm -hmm. You know, if they stick with, you know, like they've done here, there's there's three next gen figures. Yep. There's three uh, movie it's figures really from Wrath of Khan and then this Discovery series. Yep. If Which they I, if they kind of stick with that formula, I think it could yeah. work out for four or five waves. Yeah, I mean that's that's where for me the appeal is is getting characters that they didn't you know or you know the line ended in the nineties, right? So like being able to bring in Star Trek Discovery, uh, mm -hmm. and you know I I think what deep some of the later series. Maybe they didn't get to all the characters. I think they changed the scale at some point, right? And then everyone just kind of quit collecting the line. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I I feel like that's where this thing shines. I didn't even think about, to your point, John, the the uh, kind of Masters of the Universe origins of it all. Where And I think To Go Boldly says it here. These remind me a lot of the origins. To be honest, there's a lot of nostalgia in these. Absolutely. Where instead of, say, the Hasbro approach, which is pretty much just like a straight re-release mm -hmm. of the originals, Maybe things are slightly tweaked uh, with vintage card backs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Mattel, with the Origins line, I think is very successfully updated while still being true to the original vintage. And these kind of seem to be following that path. I think the main difference that maybe will let or decide why maybe Motu Origins has been successful and maybe why this one won't is to that point that the, the vintage figures are still so cheap and easily available. So there isn't this necessarily pent up demand like origins has where it's like i could never afford or reasonably afford a scare glow so this is mm -hmm. easy mm -hmm. um but i i'd be happy to be wrong because i i think adding some of these other characters would be great definitely you know um i think once once they get to the you know the main lineup when when wharf is done when mm -hmm. uh jordy is done if if they get as far as uh wesley crusher and then if they just start doing generic characters that's when i think they start pulling at strings like when mm -hmm. there's just a generic borg or just a generic ferengi it's that's when that's when i think it'll start getting rough roads for them mm -hmm. um yeah. you know just trying to sell these but i mean i don't know what the the popularity of this the discovery show is the, on um was it cbs all access uh, or it's a paramount plus now but yeah is it um like i don't know what the popularity is um i haven't seen I, any of it i feel bad you know i haven't i haven't watched it uh, but I, I do know people that do like it um mm -hmm. like one of my dear friends is like a super super uh hardcore trekky trekker um i don't know he really digs both the picard and and the discovery show mm -hmm. um but uh but that to me seems to be the appeal and in Matic penguin almost like has the counter argument where they think that the discovery stuff will hurt them. Uh, the line needs to bank on nostalgia more than the newer stuff, not knocking DSC. It's just a different market. Mm -hmm. So like, it's almost like my perspective, like, Oh, be, I already have the vintage ones, So it'd be cool to get ones I don't already have, but this is almost taking the, well, actually no, you need to go on nostalgia. That would be more successful mm -hmm. um, on the shelves. Uh, and I, maybe that's true that maybe that's very well true. Cause you know, even at the toy show, like all the extras I had in that bin, they sold the whole the whole weekend, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <Don't sell that laughs> bin. So there's clearly demand for it. And and to me, the phaser looks really cool. But I, you know, as I was putting this together, I was like, oh, I'd really love, you know, a, a original uh, enterprise. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're kind of expensive. So I I, I kind of I'm definitely going to get the original enterprise ship because I have enterprise D. I'd love. I love all the enterprises to be honest. Yeah. Like, every version of them, but yeah, I think that's one way playmates could keep this line going. If, mm -hmm. you know, if the figures sort of trickled away just in popularity because the vintage ones are so cheap, mm -hmm. I think that they could keep going with the ships because everybody that wants to collect, you know, a decent scale ship either has to go for our, the vintage playmates ones mm -hmm. or they're spending a ton of money on the art asylum versions. Yeah. And they're like, you know, astronomical, some of them. So I think mm -hmm. Playmates could really, you know, make a run at this just on ships. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because those, I mean, those are the things that kind of sell for the most now, right? Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, 
So uh, it seems to be um, uh, some people feel like Discovery isn't that good. So again, I haven't seen it, so I can't. I can't. Share yeah, I, it. yeah, I can't speak to it at all. Um, uh, sixteen-bit misfit uh, replying to enigma- enigmatic penguin. I think people who will really want these probably already have the older figures for nostalgia, especially those Wrath of Khan figs. Um, uh, Stephen Fox, I wish the Moto Origins model would have been applied to TMNT. Clean up the figure designs, add articulation, and better paint. Sub twenty dollars price point, so kids can play with them. You know, it's interesting that for Star Trek playmates is taking this approach, like bringing the old uh, toy designers, all that kind of stuff. But turtles, they're like, here's the same thing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, playmates could clean up if they did that with with turtles. Because like the, I think one of the worst things about vintage turtle figures is their stance. Yeah. Half of them are really hard to, to mm-hmm. keep upright. Yep. You know, the, the only ones that really stay up, you know, well are like later in the series. Like mm-hmm. some, especially some of the, the villains, you know, like, yeah, they have, you know, you know, just a better straight leg stance. Whereas like the turtles themselves have like the goofy, you know, almost like a backwards knee thing going on. <laughs> Like these, why do they all have to look like that? And Shredder, Shredder is the worst. Oh, legendarily bad, legendarily <laughs> bad. Um, and uh, and yeah, uh, to go bold, to go boldly, Discovery, Picard, Lower Deck, Strange New Worlds, Prodigy, all new shows that should definitely get toys expand upon their '90s nostalgia line. Yeah, uh, that that has me probably the most excited. Uh, mm-hmm. Jason says, I want some wacky playmate variants. I want my Cowabunga Captain. <laughs> 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 Uh, and volleyball uh, yeah. playing number two. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Super Seven has some TNG TNG Ultimates coming soon. What that all mean for these? That's a good point. But again, the, the Ultimates. That's another Ultimate line that I have no desire for because mm. they're going to be seven inch scale. They're going to be fifty five dollars a piece. And these these two dollar Picards that I got at the flea market, good enough for me. <laughs> they still look pretty darn good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Ultim- ultimates are just a different it's a different animal for for mm-hmm. everyone it's you know do you want to spend 55 dollars for you know whatever i'm sticking with turtles maybe i'll you know cherry pick here and there other lines mm-hmm. um i definitely won't get star trek i'm not spending 55 dollars on a on a figure for no. star trek no no um uh, the, the five hundred dollar Playmobil set looks amazing. That's just too much. So it's like if this Enterprise is like thirty bucks, I'd I'd thirty dollars get a sweet looking uh, OG <laughs> Enterprise. Just not a five hundred. Mm-hmm. Again, that's not to knock the set. It is. It does look incredible. Um, let's see. Oh, a good point here. There was never a Kirk and Spock uh, from Wrath of Khan in the Playmates line back in the nineties. Yeah, I don't think we got a Khan. Um, I know personally. Uh, they did the Kirk uh, in the Generations line. Uh, mm-hmm. that he was wearing this uniform. Uh, it do, does a little bit, little look a little bit different than this. I can't tell what I like more or less with these sculpts. To be completely honest, like I think they look really good. But say, for instance, Data here. Like I guess that looks like you know, as a Brent Spiner. Yep. Um, but then, okay, so you have that one, right? But then when I when I show or when I look at my one from the nineties, so hold on, there we go. I mean, I can't mm-hmm. get this, but this still looks, I think it still looks fantastic. Yeah. yeah I mean, I that know. is 100% comparable to what's coming out. Yeah. And, and this one has, you know, the panels and stuff like that. So you can, you can kind of see the working circuitry and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, Again, and it, this was, you know, two dollars. So I it, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, even though let me go over, put it back to two screen here. Um uh to, to see, you know, to me personally looking at it, I just want to get the figures that I couldn't get back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think they'll need a bit of everyone. They'll need the people that just want to hit that the nostalgia rush again that didn't have it originally, or they, you know, same as maybe people pick, picking them up at markets now for a nickel Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the people are trying to complete collections and the people that may want to get the ships because they're too expensive now Mm -hmm. Uh, but john what do you think about price points do we know the price points for the ships yet i don't think so i'm gonna say i mean they're light and sounds at least i'm gonna i'm gonna say 40 bucks 40 plus 
Because what's a what's a vintage one of these going to go for? Fifty bucks. Mm, I would say boxed fifty bucks for for the this particular ship. Yeah. Um. So I think if they're coming in, maybe ten bucks less than the vintage. I think I think they're going to sell. I think they're going to sell mm -hmm. well. Um. And uh, great call out here, Alpha Trion. I want a uh, TOS, uh, the original series bridge playset that has never been done before. Yeah, it was. There was that. It was the cardboard packaging, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot of stuff they didn't get to that I think if they if they hit the playsets and ships right with the figures, this could be a really really cool line. Yeah. Um, so to answer that question, uh, will collectors care? I think it's it's TBD. That would be my official answer. Is TBD. <laughs> But I think there's a possibility that it could work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's really dependent on the figure's price. Yep. It it it's can you can you justify spending that much money over a vintage figure? Because the vintage figures you still get carded for you know, yeah, five bucks. Yep. So maybe the packaging is going to be really good looking. Where you know, dependent on uh, which series. So if it's uh, TNG or movie or whatever, are they going to be in the same sort of style? Like, however, the package mm -hmm. is laid out. Yeah. Um, so, mint on card collectors would want it, but I think it's really going to depend on the price. Yep. 100%. And it'll have to be kind of like surprising the way I think Motu Origins was surprising. It was like 15 bucks, even though it's like 17 bucks. Mm -hmm. But if it's like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, ugh, I don't no. know. Think it's no. Especially work. for a five inch figure. No. Yeah. Yep. I think it I think it needs to be in that fifteen dollar range just because you can literally go buy these characters right You right can here. get five for fifteen dollars. Exactly. <laughs> Versus Masters of the Universe, you're not gonna find one carded. You may find one loose in beat up condition for fifteen dollars. So yeah. That's that's what I think they're they're competing with themselves from twenty years ago still. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the tough thing. But I, I, I do wish it success because there's just a lot that can be done. Because uh, agree here with Enigmatic, Enigmatic Penguin. The TNG Bridge is one of the all-time best places. It is a fantastic place. And would love a real, you know, not cardboard, to Alpha Trion's point, a TOS playset. set. Um, would be awesome. Uh, the Micro Machines ships would be cool. Um, even though now I think Hasbro owns Micro Machines, so maybe that won't fly. Um. And uh, yeah, VZ, VCG, we talked about it a little bit, but yeah, the Enterprise and Playboy Mill looks amazing. Yeah. It's too expensive, though. I, I can't drop. I mean, again, I have dropped stupid money like that on things, but I don't have room <laughs> to drop that kind of money on that kind of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Overman, can we get Generations Kirk and Picard on horseback? Absolutely. Um, and uh, to go boldly, this isn't all that Playmates are releasing this year, by the way. New toys from the new shows are coming later on in the year. Absolutely. Again, Whatever it is, I, I hope it's successful. Because the last time Playmates did Star Trek, it was for the kind of the Abrams relaunch, right? Mm -hmm. Was it 2007, somewhere around there? 2008, 2009? Yeah, probably around there, yeah. The and, and those were like a four-inch figure, right? They were tiny. They were like maybe three and three-quarter. I don't even know if they made it to four inches. The figures were terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the figures were really bad. Awful. Um. The didn't they come with like build a bridge pieces I or like so. just build the like the computer set like the seating areas or something i'm, I'm trying mm -hmm. to remember how those were laid out yeah um but it was awful <laughs> yeah. I, I had the ship the ship was kind of cool the ship was neat i had that and i displayed that for a while the enterprise but overall that line was like almost like playmates what are you doing like this was a really cool pretty full featured line and this just seems really sure. And then, so then they stopped having the license. McFarlane made two figures and stopped doing it. Um, so it seems like St Star Trek hasn't had a home. So it's neat. Playmates has the license back, right? Because there's that history there. And now they're mm -hmm. tying to nostalgia. So it's just a matter of can they kind of execute in a way that Playmates hasn't executed since the 2012 TMNT line. Mm -hmm. And I and I hope for their sake they do because. It is to, I mean, we've said on the show a while now, like it's, it's kind of sad to see playmates that once was such a great, awesome, innovative toy company has kind of been resting on their loyal, laurels a little bit. And yeah. hopefully this is the, the jolt they need to kind of get back on track. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cause there was, I mean, there was a time when 
Playmates was 30, 40% of shelves in the 90s. And now it's what 1% between whatever turtles you might find and those uh, Godzilla figures. Yeah, I think the Godzilla one has the most shelf space because I don't see like there's some turtles things that show up in the collector aisle and then Walmart has the the retro stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of shocking to me, really. Um, a lot of people are agreeing here. Yeah, the, the 2009 figures were terrible, shoddy quality. Star Trek 2009 line stunk. Um, to go boldly, I also think there's more support from Bicon CBS to really push this line of the fans through their Star Trek social media and websites. That is true. I mean, they've really kind of focused on building up their IP, uh, especially with Paramount Plus. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I agree. Playmates was the Kenner of the 90s. And that was kind of my because I think Ryan was trying to say that Kenner was the, the best of the 90s. And I was like, maybe like 90 to 91. But very quickly, they kind of lost the edge to me to what Playmates was doing. Yeah. Um, uh, and like <laughs> and. And again, maybe we should do maybe we should do best toy company of the '90s, just a special one-off. Um, I know we don't use the debate word on the show, so maybe not. Won't say that, but uh, maybe have Ryan and maybe somebody else come on and kind of mm -hmm. debate. But I, I, you won't convince me that Kenner didn't die in the '90s. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The playmate playmates ruled the '90s. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not to say they didn't do anything. Like Kenner did stuff. Obviously, Power of the Force. But that, see, what do you count? Do you count that as Kenner? Or do you count it as Hasbro, Power of the Force Two, and like that later stuff? You know, I, I'm still, I still count that as Hasbro because there was those were the days when when things were so intermingled, mm -hmm. where like even it was like by 1997, the Hasbro Star Wars stuff said Hasbro, the Kenner collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was there's still too much, you know, confusion yeah. in there. And remember, there was the weird, uh, the GI Joe. Ken wasn't there Kenner GI Joes? Wasn't that a thing? Wasn't there like there was like a GI Joe line that wasn't? It was like was kind it, of um, bigger. Um, Extreme GI so, Joe. So, uh, well, there was GI Joe Extreme, but then there was also GI Joe Sergeant Savage. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Is that what you're talking about? Maybe I thought like there was this weird thing where Kenner did GI Joe figures. Maybe I'm just that was like a Mandela effect kind of thing. But. <laughs> It could be. I, I just remember those other two lines. I think it was was it Teenage <laughs> Size and Savage? I know Extreme, obviously. Yeah. Was that Hasbro or Kenner that did it? Extreme was Kenner. Okay. Was it okay? All right. Yeah, I, just, I remember I was just like, what? It's like <laughs> Kenner is dead. <laughs> Long live Kenner. <laughs> and that's why those figures are awful. Oh, they're but and that's just I was just like <laughs> you can't tell me that all of those like Congo Jurassic Park while Jurassic Park had, had cool dinos they're humans that they made for all, uh, were awful just <laughs> terrible terrible um all right one last thing before we tidy things up here on this special early bird special it's been special too many times I apologize uh is this kind of I, I, is it controversial or or just kind of it seems kind of crazy or maybe we saw it coming. I don't know. Uh, with four mode toys. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about those really fun looking Lords of Power figures. Um, and they were supposed to go on pre-order uh, the, the 18th, I believe, wasn't it? Yep. 18th or 19th. Yeah. And uh, so they the figures looked really cool. Um, and they've kind of pulled a lot of the stuff down from it. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, the pre-order is not happening now. And on their front page, uh, this is what they are saying. They're saying, we are currently in discussion with another party regarding some character designs and brand elements. We don't agree with the other party's positions, and we strongly feel that our products are respectful of their copyrights. In the interest of being accommodating and maintaining a good relationship, along with ensuring a smooth production without further delays, we have submitted some variations and are currently waiting a response. We remain hopeful for an amicable and expeditious resolution, and we will keep you informed of any further development at the best of our ability. We are terribly sorry for the situation that is significantly impacting all of us. We decided to delay the reopening of pre-orders until this inconvenience is resolved. We will keep you informed of any further developments to the best of our ability. Thank you for all your support, the 4MO team. Uh, so the thing we all kept asking... 
I guess became a reality. Like how the heck mm-hmm. is Michelle not <laughs> suing them? <laughs> Which if that is the case, or maybe they're just maybe putting a cease and desist or something. Like that, I don't know. But yeah. Um, I don't know. Like what, what, what's your thoughts on that, John? I'm, I'm see it. This could go one of two ways because, um, if Mattel owns Lords of power as a brand name, because we've gotten Lords of power product from Mattel, Mm -hmm. um, in, in the past year, or is Mattel trying to sue them for, uh, in the same way that Mattel tried to sue Remco for their body style back in the Mm eighties, where obviously Remco won that suit. Because exactly. You, can't, you know, you can't uh, copyright a body. Yep. Um, or, or a figure's height. And I would assume they're using that as like precedent. Okay, that was precedent. It's right. already been settled. Mm-hmm. So what are you what are you arguing here, Mattel? Right. And and you know what? I was kind of thinking about this, um, how this may have gotten started because we were we were days away from the pre order. Everybody putting their orders in. We were super excited. We're mm-hmm. getting an early bird set of a cardboard yeah. bird set. Mm-hmm. So this is this is how I kind of thought like this is how it played out. Okay. Um, it was only weeks ago that Mark Taylor died, right? Yep. Mark Taylor, obviously instrumental in He Man, Mattel, tons of stuff. Yep. Mark Taylor was working on this when yep. Mark Taylor passed. You know, maybe the Mattel guys this wasn't on their radar, mm-hmm. but when he passed, all of a sudden, like everywhere, all over social media you know in toy world Mm -hmm. it was you know hashtag mark taylor hashtag mattel hashtag masters hashtag lords of power and everything's sort of interconnected yeah and then before you know it the people from mattel the higher ups that are not in the know you know just ceos they're seeing this and like Mm -hmm. why was mark taylor working on this giving our 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 designs away to another company how can this happen yeah and that got the ball rolling and it just worked out where Mattel found this out days before the orders were going up because this this information from today we didn't know about. It was mm-hmm. last week that we found out that they were just pushing order pre-orders back a week. And then that week goes by and then they say uh we have more problems than than just that. Yeah. So that's that's how I kind of, you know, got, you know, this is just my thinking is Yeah. Mark Mark Taylor was involved with this, obviously huge at Mattel, mm-hmm. and his death sort of got this snowball effect. Yeah, no, I, I, it's 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 a good point, right? Because that's how usually that's kind of what we brought up. I brought up about the whole Tipgate, the the uh, Neutronicon Tipgate, where mm-hmm. it very much and it, it would you know working for companies like a lot of times the legal department they're not always clued. There's a bajillion things going on. They're not always clued in and. And much like maybe making the orange chip, like the success of the proton pack was like, oh, this is really wait, why that's a gun? We can't do that. And then and then people ask questions and it snowballs. And and mm-hmm. you're right, I think this very much could be the same thing because this did get a lot more attention uh, with Mark Taylor's passing, mm-hmm. especially it's kind of like one of those legacy things, right? It's the last thing he was working on before he passed, and and uh, in that great early bird, yeah, you're right. Like it, it probably just caught somebody's attention. And, you know, they they can throw the cease and desist around pretty easily and pretty willy nilly um, without having to do too much work. <clears throat> and, yeah, and I think, you know, now Formo Toys, which is, a, a, I would assume, a pretty small operation here, um, is going to try and be accommodating because it's not so much that they're probably still legally in the clear. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, so please do not take that as, as you know, uh, the word of truth here. But they they don't have the money to retain lawyers and to to have a long you know litigation and a long battle with a big company like Mattel that just has you know stacks of cash and they can just kind of keep lawsuits going like that's the game right mm-hmm. so yeah. that's what Formo is clearly going to try to avoid because then it just becomes not worth it at that point to a smaller company which which is a shame so I I do hope that whatever they're trying to do right now whatever they need to tweak and change um is is good enough to kind of like say get mattel to chill out because i think mattel has a lot to lose here too where this is a small little company i don't this i think this only enhances uh you know some of the cool stuff or mm-hmm. you know origins and a lot of the other masters of the universe stuff these are clearly not you know the he-man characters 
So I, I, I don't know. Uh, John, how much do you think this can change before people may, might lose interest? I, I don't think there's any... They're all kind of unique characters anyway. Like, I feel like they can change it however, and I think people will still want to buy it. But, John, do you think there's like a, a point to where people will just not want to be involved in this anymore if they have to change it too much? Uh, no, I think I think everybody or the majority of people who are into this from the get-go will still be into it. Um, I really think I really think the biggest problem is uh, the main hero character. Yeah. I mean, he is, I mean, a one for one look mm -hmm. of what was designed. If you look, go back into the, yeah. any of the, the art of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the toys of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe from uh, Dark Horse, mm -hmm. that character shows up yeah. in, in so much old media. Mm -hmm. So if any of those, if any of that stuff has a, you know, copyright Mattel, if, Mark Taylor was working for them while he was there and it was mm -hmm. in-house. Mattel could say, yeah, we we own that design. Yep. And I'm sure that's the case, right? Any Even yeah. though Mark Taylor created it, Mattel's going to own it, same as any other company. If you make mm -hmm. something while under their employ, it's theirs. Yeah. I, I think the the other five figures are are in the clear. I think I think that main figure is is the sticking point with Mattel and, yeah. and just the name of Lords of Power. Mm -hmm. And Lords of Power, too. Yeah, that's... I think maybe they didn't copyright it so they could kind of swoop in and take it. Um, but I don't think it needs to, I don't think it needs to be called that personally. Like it could be called anything. It could be called dudes of power or just power. Yeah, I don't know. Just, anything. Yeah. Anything. Call it masters of power. Really get them going. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like to me, like Babaro who's yes, very clearly like a he man. That's I, and I don't know, but that's what I care about the least. Like to me, I was about this Karem and Zarella and Pantera and the adversary. Mm -hmm. I thought those were the cool figures in this line. And I, I kind of dug the Barbario in the sense that, yeah, that's, that's, that's like an early Mark Taylor He-Man concept. That's cool. Mm -hmm. But I was much more interested in the other figures personally. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me too. I mean, <laughs> we've gotten other figures that kind of look like uh, Barbaro. Mm hmm. You can yeah. make one if there's plenty. I have a, I think I still have one uh, uh, custom cast head of that figure. It, it looks like identical. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, space company. Dudes of power, really? Listen, I was thinking off the top of my head, okay? It's live. Tower of power. <laughs> Ladies of electricity. Oh, there you go. I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> <laughs> uh Pantera the band will be filing a suit too. Uh, yeah. I think a couple people said uh, maybe it was 16, but but a few people were saying, is it our fault uh that uh that Mattel went after them? Um I I hope not. I I I what I don't I I don't believe that we're that watched or whatever that we could cause that. That's one. And two, I don't know. I, I just I just I can't believe that. But uh, yeah, Mattel's lawyers must have been watching GDL. What have we done? It had to be the studio <laughs> live chat. <laughs> I don't know. People have energy. <laughs> People have energy. <laughs> Power dudes. Uh, supervisors of the galaxy. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. This doesn't get enough traffic to that. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe I still want to accept responsibility if it did happen. Because I, I would feel really bad if that was the case. Because I do. No, really I, don't, I don't think it's on us. Um. But uh, but yeah, uh, Tower of Power that might be still my favorite. Macanita Silva, um, mighty <laughs> might mighty Morphin Power. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right. Um, well, I think John. I think I said things we want to talk about, right? For the special, yeah, I think that's it. Early yeah. bird special. Just a little something for your dinner time. Yeah, exactly. Not just something dinner entertainment. Here on the Geek Dad Life <laughs> channel, um, uh, I guess what what else is coming up? We'll we'll have our normal toy geeks uh, on Sunday, whatever that is. I do think we should try to organize this best toy line of the '90s discussion because mm -hmm. um, it got really heated. We'll, uh, we'll, right. we'll have to uh, like make uh, like specific examples of mm -hmm. not just toy lines, but like pieces from that line that like made it like what's iconic what what did it mm -hmm. yeah exactly and like, i just i don't know how i don't know how you could argue the case for maybe you could argue mcfarlane i think 
That's end of, and maybe you could argue Toy Biz, but they were still kind of crappy figures. If you like take away nostalgia, they were still kind of crappy. You know what? You know what Toy Biz did? They did the Mutant Hall of Fame. That takes them right off the list. <laughs> so true. When I, we talk, I think it was our first episode. Is the greatest dis one of the greatest toy disappointments of my life mm -hmm. was the Mutant Hall of Fame from Toy Biz. And somehow that thing has become valuable. Yeah. Don't ask no me sense. what. Don't know how. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, I still need to. I, uh, the, the COVID delayed a lot of my work on this channel, so I apologize. But I still need to work on doing a video review of this guy. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I got to do that. I got to do the video about uh the um how i store these things there's a lot i gotta do so i apologize for that but you know i have been battling covid okay <laughs> <laughs> all right that will do it for this episode of toy geeks again join us sunday uh whatever that topic will be i'm sure it'll be something related to the latest in toy geek news and then we'll also maybe work on that special best toy line or toy company of the 90s and uh our friends uh, yes have some will be do doing toy anxiety tomorrow i'm curious to see what uh insane grail playset craig will have bought this weekend i don't know I'm, I'm waiting for him to show off a filmation ghostbusters uh headquarters i you know i'm kind of that if i it, listen i don't want to make him feel bad if it doesn't happen but in his year of the playset craig needs to add a Filmation's Ghostbusters Ghost Command. Um, I'm sorry to put that pressure on you, Craig. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if it doesn't happen, the year of the playset will be a failure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I know you can do it. He'll probably have it next week. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, thank you, everybody, in the chat. Uh, again, thank you for our Trek fans that showed up as well and gave us the information. Really hope the line succeeds. And uh, Formo Toys, whatever we can do. If we need to we pull our money together, get you some lawyer help. I just let mm -hmm. us know. Hit us up, geekdeadlife at gmail.com. And uh, make sure to hit that like button if you haven't done it yet. And again, hit the subscribe button and that bell icon to make sure you don't miss whenever we do a surprise live stream or any other show that's dropped on the Geek Dad Live channel. And uh, until next time, hasta luego. Or I guess live long and, and prosper. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Take care.